no one from oops <laughs> from <laughs> Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. Yes, boys, we are back, and this is episode 44. That is apparently 45 for Norwegian. Let me know in the comments down below what is episode 46 in your language, boys. As always, I always appreciate these comments at the beginning of the videos. It's always interesting to see how things are pronounced in your guys' languages. So go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. That one was a bit of an easier one, but we've had a couple of tough ones. Starting off into this episode, guys, look at the beautiful league table. Crystal Palace on 24 points. Absolutely amazing scenes Chelsea Manchester City and United right behind us and as you guys might have noticed I was gone for a couple of days two days of no uploads I was away this weekend with my fiance um, we had our seven year anniversary so we did like a quick little trip to Cologne and we had a great time over there now I'm back fully energized and ready for this career mode to continue last episode boys we have beaten Chelsea and I'm very very happy about that that was the team that I was scared of and that was a team that we have beaten 2-1 absolutely amazing and if you guys are hyped for the Crystal Palace career mode being back on the channel it would mean the world to me if you could hit that like button on this video guys I'm gonna set a big target for this one I want 3,000 likes for the comeback of the series. Go ahead and smash it out, boys. As long as we keep up the likes over 3,000 in certain episodes, I'm going to tell you the Crystal Palace career mode is going to continue forever. If it drops below 3,000, I have to start thinking about, am I going to continue this career mode? What am I going to do? So go ahead, prevent that from happening. Hit that like button. Now, let's talk about a couple of things that you guys have talked about in the comments down below. Here's Shashwa Deep. He says, Trossard has been better than Nakajima lately. Trossard should be a competition for that left mid spot and should get into the first team if he does better. Now, here's the deal. That is not wrong. If you go into the stats, boys, Trossard currently is the guy with the second highest amount of goals in our team. In 14 games, he has scored 8 goals and gotten 1 assist. Nakajima in 14 games has gotten 5 goal contributions. So, yes, Trossard does seem like the better player at the moment. But Nakajima is like a fan favorite. So, if Trossard outperforms Nakajima in this episode, boys, as a super sub, we can bring him in into the starting lineup. But I'm going to tell you one thing. As soon as Nakajima turns into a super sub, he's going to destroy everyone. So then it's going to be again, oh, Nakajima is playing out of his mind. We got to bring him back into the starting lineup. Whoever is on the bench is going to be the better player, in my opinion, because second half, when the opponent is tired, it's so easy for Trossard or Nakajima, whoever is the super sub, to just come in and crush them. So hopefully you guys uh, will get to see something exciting this episode between those two. That would be quite cool. But let's move on into the next episode, uh, next comment right here from Matej Benkovic. He says, I think that you should put Getson Fernandez instead of Townsend in the reserves team because you need that player of the month award for him. Now, Getson Fernandez, can he play down the wings though? That's the thing. Like, I'm not too sure. He's a center midfielder. And I don't really think that he should be down the wings. I mean, he does have decent sprint speed, to be honest with you. How's his crossing? Crossing is not the best. He's a right footer. So you guys are saying I should put him down there. I guess I can do that. We can test it out. Uh, or maybe I can switch to a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. How about that? Maybe that will make it a little bit easier. I think that's probably the better decision right here to make. So we will go with Milivojevic, CDM, Nandez and Fernandez at center mid, Pereira at camp. There we go. Solution has been found. Thank you for that comment. Moving on to the next one. It is Milton Elvis. He says, Gianni, get Hermoso off the thumbnail and replace him with Jovic. Done, boys. Done. It is done. The graphics designer is actually watching the series and he has realized that he has seen that comment, I think, and he has made a new thumbnail, including Jovic. Hope you guys like it. Big thanks to Mitch for getting that one done for ourselves. And last episode, also, boys, we were talking about suggestions for FIFA 20. Here are two comments. First of all, Nugo, and this is the most likes on it, which kind of surprises me, says we can customize our own manager and that there should be more cutscenes that updates the manager rating. Now, here's the thing. 
I truly don't care about the manager rating because it doesn't really have any influence unless you drop below 40, then you could get fired. And also, customizing my own manager, it only makes sense if the cutscenes actually have an impact onto the game. If we have cutscenes including the players that we are talking to and stuff, if we have like one-on-one -on -one talks with players talking about their morale, trying to motivate them, then it does make sense to go ahead and do something like that. But in my opinion, that is just cosmetics. We don't need cosmetics in career mode. We need major changes, like minimum potential instead of max potential. That's what's going to make the game even more fun. If FIFA 20 is this game with min potentials, I'm in. I'm completely in. It's going to make career mode so much more fun. So that's the thing. And then here's another comment, which I thought should actually have a lot more likes from Rishit Singhal. He says we should be able to create our own club. Yes, give us the ability to create our own club again. It was so much fun creating our own club from scratch, doing a road to glory with them from the, like League 2. That was the most fun thing you can do in career mode and combine that with min potentials. Oh boy, you have the best road to glory ever in your hands. But Thank you for all the comments, boys. I appreciate it. Now it's time to get back into the Premier League. Oh, before we actually get into it, the fan objectives, boys. We have the Triple Man on 2 out of 4, Millie Mayhem on 2 out of 10, 16 out of 40 for the Double Trouble. We do need some goals slowly. Jovic now has returned from his injury, so I'm really looking forward to see how he can perform for us. Benfica's Academy, we got scammed out of two Player of the Month awards so far, in my opinion. So we got quite unlucky in that one. Quadruple we are looking good we're looking quite fine locking it down not so good yet now against Bournemouth it's time to step up and do our best now Bournemouth is the game that we play at home and then after that we're up against Basel in the Champions League let's see what we can do in these games it is going to be the worst attack in the Premier League against the best attack in the Premier League and when we are talking about the best attack it's obviously considering Wilfried Zaha and Jovic and Joao Felix lately Joao Felix has been quite active on Twitter the guy has 30,000 followers if you guys want to be one of the people that in the future say oh I used to follow Joao Felix when he only had like 30,000 followers go ahead and do it now he's not even verified on Twitter I mean that that's the state of this guy's Twitter account. At some point, he could be that ne next big thing. So if you want to follow his road to glory, so to say, make sure to follow the young man. But right now, he has been stepping up for us. Joao Felix has been getting a lot better in his performances. And hopefully, that carries on in this episode. But most importantly, I'm hoping to see Jovic play well. He's back from his injury. Who knows how he will be playing for us. You know what guys, since I haven't played this for a couple of days, I was so looking forward to play this again. Like I couldn't wait to get back into playing uh, career mode, especially with this team. And also, I've slowly been getting into green timing my shots. So you're going to see me try a lot of green type shots. And if there we go, Tikankov, what a header son. That is one of the most unlikely people to score a header. 1-0 up, the best attack in the crystal in the um, in the Premier League. <laughs> I completely bottled it. Oh man, I, I, sometimes I hate myself. But these Nakajima with the cross and Tigankov with one of the most perfect headers we have seen in a long time. That makes it 1-0 early on against Bournemouth. Five goals in the Premier League so far for Tigankov. I'm just hoping that we can get some sort of push for the player of the month again with one of our former Benfica players. That objective is going to be the hardest one to chase after and hopefully we can get it done. And also, I am working on ideas for FIFA 20 and our career modes and I have one idea that I really really like and I want to know if you guys would like it as well. We could start implementing it in FIFA 19 as well if you guys want me to. Hold on though, this could be a big chance right here with Shoya Nakajima. Trossard wants your spot! Green timed, I'm telling you. That's it, boys. That makes it 2-0. And Bournemouth have been smashed to pieces within 11 minutes of the game from both of the wingers. Shoya so far with an assist and a goal. And it's like he knew that you guys were talking about him. It's like he was like, oh, okay. You want to play Trossard, huh? Let me show you what I can do. And that is exactly what he does. Smashes it past the keeper. 
and that is a beautiful goal to show that you belong into the starting lineup. Yeah, going back to the idea that I had a second ago, holy moly, I'm 2-0 up in 11 minutes by the way, but um, the idea was to basically do a career mode and put another restriction on ourselves. Obviously, we will have the fan objectives in FIFA 20. The fan objectives have become a massive part of my career modes and I don't think they will ever leave my career modes ever again. That's gonna be something that I'm gonna keep around forever. So I'm very proud that that idea has come off of my head this year. And um, also, um, next year, what I wanna do is, if I have a career mode, I'm only allowed to buy a player if he is not higher rated than the ones that I already have. So basically, Joao Felix right now is the highest rated player in our team together with two others, 86 rating. So in order to keep career modes interesting, I think it would be the best thing to do that I'm only allowed to bring in players to a certain of a certain level if that level already exists in my team because that also kind of makes it realistic. That helps to like not buy the sickest players straight away that improve my team massively that really helps to like grind my way towards a good team rather than buying them already. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think about that idea? Um, hashtag idea in the comments down below if you want to talk about that specific topic as Strakosha makes a massive save. There we go, Sanda, bring it forward, push forward. Jovic now getting in behind. Now is the moment to play through. What a ball from Joao. We bring it back into Jovic, and that's the goal, let's go, he's back, Zaha not being selfish at all in the 45th minute, it's a goal from Jovic, I will take it boys, that's a great, great play, Joao Felix with an incredible pass into the run of Zaha, and Zaha only has to put it past the defender right there, and he does it beautifully, absolutely amazing goal, Jovic, Get it in there. It is 3-0 against Bournemouth. The best attack in the Premier League is proving once again that they definitely are the best. If we can get a clean sheet in this one, man, that'd be a great success because as you guys might remember, against Bournemouth especially, I tend to concede a lot of goals. Tigankov, beautifully played. It's a great goal. Wow, dude. What is going on? Look at the passing play. Jovic to Sanda, Sanda to Chigankov, and the most casual of passes into Zaha, who scores yet another goal. Jovic and Zaha doing really well in this one. Zaha with a goal, Jovic with a goal, but I do need Jovic to score one more. If he can get one more right here, if we can make it 5-0 against Bournemouth, I'd be so satisfied because his comeback is very important to the team and you can clearly already tell how important it is. He plays a big part in the attacks at all times. Oh, that's beautifully played. Is that going to be yet another? Yeah, the clean sheet is gone, man. I need to stop talking about it. Every time you talk about it, Johnny, you can see the goal. Stop it. You, you, you're putting a curse on yourself. You need to stop it, man. It's 4-1. That's quite unfortunate. And now... It is time for the substitutes. We are going to be bringing on Pereira. We're going to be bringing on um, Trossar down the right. And it is going to be Milivojevic for Sander Berger because I do need him for the objectives and he's only on 2 out of 10. So hopefully Milivojevic can somehow do something here. That'd be pretty nice. But other than that, I would love for Jovic to get another goal. I red-timed it. Wow. We're waiting for the right people to make these runs. I see Jovic. Can we get into him? Yes, we can. Luca, Luca cuts inside. Ah, it's great defending by Nathan Ake. He has been man marking Jovic throughout this entire game. That could have been a second one for Jovic. Quite unfortunate for him. But we do not get another chance, I think, because I completely bottled it with that pass right there. That should mean, though, it is a 4 1 victory against Bournemouth. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a great performance. We don't really have a standout player in this one. I guess you could say Nakajima is the one, but the camera has turned to Jovic in this case, which kind of shows me he might have been chosen as the man of the match right here. I think for the, uh, for the player of the month, the rating in the match is quite important. And Jovic is on a 9.3. He's actually the worst out of um, Zaha, Nakajima and Tsigankov. Tsigankov is the player of the match. He has gotten himself a goal and an assist. The same with Nakajima though. Jovic has the same as well. One goal, one assist. 
Great performance by everyone in the attack. Amazing stuff from the team there. I've just gotten a message that Jairo Riedewald wants to leave our team in the next transfer window. Now, that is something that I can get him behind. I'm okay with him leaving. Player of the month, October shortlist. And it, it, it includes absolutely no one from... Oops. <laughs> from... <laughs> It includes no one from Benfica, which is quite unfortunate. Um, I am hoping, though, that um, Nakajima gets it. because Just because of the storyline. Because you guys wanted to replace him with Trossard. He was like, you know what? I'm going to do this right now. And he took everyone apart. And it clearly is four Crystal Palace players that are nominated for... The player of the month which makes me very proud it shows that we are the dominating side at the moment now we are up against basel away from home in the champions league um do i want to play this now i won't be able to play with the first team they're kind of tired and then we're up against forest away we will have to sim two games this month i'm obviously not simming the game against tottenham i'm not simming against everton betis is that at home Betis game is uh, away as well. Wow, all of these games are away. We have to sim at least one. No, we have to sim two away games this month. The only home game we have is against Spurs. So I'm going to sim against Basel right here. I know it's a bit risky, but if we lose and the Betis wins their game against Bayern, which is kind of unrealistic, but let's say it happens. We both will be on six points and then we'll be playing against the Betis ourselves to kind of get a good result and get ahead of them again. So that's the plan. Now, we will have to play the reserves team. I don't know what to expect right here. It would be great if we could get at least a draw. A draw would be perfectly fine. They have lost against us 2-1 the last time. Let's see if we can get a decent result right here. Fernandez scores, gets on. You guys wanted him in a team and he scores straight away. You see what happens? You guys motivate these players, man. It is 1-1 though, because they have responded immediately. Can we get another one? Van Bissaka getting subbed in for Dodo. I don't like it. Shea scores, Pereira scores. Let's go. Come on, boys. Let's get one more. Let's get one more. Please. It's been an intense game so far. It is going to be a 2-2 draw. I will take that. Bayern Munich have beaten Real Betis 3-2. Quite close result right there as well. But that is a good one for ourselves. We have now moved to 7 points. Real Betis is stuck at 3. And um, this, this was potentially one of the best results to get for us. And um, Basel is now on 2 points, I believe. So... Great stuff from Crystal Palace right there. The reserves team has done well in that match. And as we said, we have to sing two games a month until April. Is that Paul Pogba? Hold on. Did Chelsea buy Pogba? Or am I missing something here? I think I saw... I think I saw Chelsea with Pogba. Tsigankov grabs the player of the month award, boys. That is the first one for himself this season. I like to see that. I like it a lot. Calvin Lewin is happy with his chance at Crystal Palace. That is very nice to see. He does get a lot of playing time in that reserves team and also in the first team. So it's finally good to see a good message coming in. That's very nice, but we move on. We have Nottingham Forest at home, I th away actually. I think I'm going to sim this one as well, boys. I think these are the two games that we are going to sim this month. And the rest, we will play if we want to. So that's the way it's going to go. I think Forest isn't really high up there in the league table. Yeah, they're in the 16th position. This is a good opportunity for some of these players right here to get a good performance in. And who are we playing against after this? There's a bunch of free time. Yes, perfect. So after that, we're going to be up against Tottenham, which is going to be the game that we play play ourselves now i do need my first team to play well right here it could be a bad result but we do have quite the cushion between us and chelsea at the moment chelsea have drawn against nottingham forest so that means this team isn't a pushover but zaha scores in the 19th minute we will take that come on then come on then boys let's get one more just to make sure trossard gets subbed in for jovic in the 46th minute that's a bit early but i'll take it Come on, lads. Let's let's get that win. Zaha gets a yellow. Pereira gets subbed in. Wood has scored on the penalty. That's why Chelsea have drawn. This team isn't that bad. It is a 1-1 draw against Nottingham. A very, very disappointing result in my opinion. But it looks like Chelsea might have gotten a draw as well. They are not on good form since they have lost to us. Which is something I love seeing. You can see Chelsea have dropped down, boys. Manchester City 
have taken over the second position and they have beaten Manchester United. Wow, okay. Things have turned around. And here we are now up against Spurs. The top scorer, Leroy Sané, is still sat at nine. He had one or two games where he went absolutely crazy. And ever since then, he's like undone. So maybe Leroy Sané can't step up his game again for Manchester City. Aguero is on five. City do have two players up there. In that list, we have Zaha on five goals. I think Jovic should be on around four or five as well. So that is good for us to see. Now, the first team is fully ready. I'm ready for this game against Spurs. It, it will be a quite intense game. I do need a good result because that draw against Nottingham has given the teams below us a little bit of hope to catch up back to Crystal Palace. This season, man, we're going for all the trophies. I want all of them. And because of that, we have to step it up against Spurs right here. They are currently in the 17th position. What? What happened to Spurs? Hold on a second. Let's check out their team. Why is this team struggling so much? So Harry Kane is still there. Hold on, we're gonna look through the team. So they have Loris, they have Immobile, they have Harry Kane, and they are not scoring enough? What? Um, they have Hyung Min Son, Parejo, Van Yama, Yaramendi, Eriksen, Dele Ali. How is this team in the 17th position? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, I can't take this game uh, too lightly. I know this will be a very tough game. 17th position doesn't mean anything in this case. So the first team is stepping up right now against Tottenham. I am quite interested in seeing their starting lineup. I don't know what to expect right here. It is quite odd that they are struggling this much. Okay, Loris isn't playing, first of all. Who the hell is Georgian? Who is Teze? Who is Ogilvy? Are these Pokemon? What the hell is going on? Why is this team playing when they have all of those insane players? Who are these kids? <laughs> Georgian, Teze, Ogilvy, Amos, Oakley, Booth, Keen. I know Keen, but why are these guys in a starting lineup for Tottenham? This should potentially be an easier match than the, get, than the one against uh, Bournemouth. I'm not even kidding. There's no surprise as to why this team is in the 17th position. This is an absolute joke. Jovic. Jovic plays it through. We play it through. Oh, 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 yes. That is absolutely amazing. Yes, I should have taken the shot with Zaha. I know, guys. But I really need to go for that objective. And Zaha is doing fine, man. He's all right with all the goals and assists he's getting. He should be completely fine. But the two strikers are playing together perfectly in that position. Especially that last pass. And the weight on it from Zaha is just perfect. As Jovic gets it into the back of the net against a very, very weak defense of Tottenham. It's five goals for Jovic. He now has the same amount as Zaha. Great job. Great goal, beautifully played. Let's continue. This Tottenham team doesn't stand a chance. And here we go through the middle with Joao. Joao, run through. Play it. Let's... Oh my God, why does this keep on happening? Why are these players not stopping their runs? Jovic, where are you running into? Are you trying to get in behind the goal? Oh man, I can't even believe I missed the target there. From that position, is it even possible to miss the target to the left? That should be illegal. Great steal by Nakajima. We bring it back into the middle. Jovic into Sanderberg. Uh, not Jovic. Joao Felix into Sanderberg. And here goes Nakajima again. He started off this attack and he's already in the attack. In the penalty area. Sander. Captain. Come on, Captain. You should have gotten it done there. It was a weak foot shot, so it's okay. It's a good ball to Ogilvy. A Pokemon over to Harry Kane. And we get it over to Van Bissaka. Great defensive work there from the defense, especially from Strakosha, who has done exceptionally well to parry that one. It was a great shot from Harry Kane with his head. I mean, do you actually call it a shot when the, when it's from coming off of his head? Do you actually say that? I don't think you do. You just say it's a header, right? That's pretty much it. But Jovic now holding off the defenders. Jovic does really well. Gets it into Zaha. Zaha over to Shoya. Shoya to Felix. Felix turns. Joao, beautifully done. That turn was exceptional. Oh, no, man. That's a goal. That's a goal. I knew it. As soon as I saw the ball go down to the right, I looked down and I saw Keane fighting against my defender. And it was clear. It was clear that he would get onto the end of that one. 
it is 1-1. Tottenham do come back into this game with their Pokemon players. And um, yeah, that's just a great goal. I can't really say anything against it. I think Manola should have done better there. I think Manola should be the one preventing that cross from going through. He needs to try and hit it, but he doesn't. And it is Keane with his fourth goal in the Premier League. So it seems like he is playing a lot of games for Tottenham right now. I got to admit, it is a very, very tough game. I did not expect this Tottenham team to play this well. I guess I kind of underestimated them after scoring that first goal. But now in this second half, I'm going to take this game very, very serious. I'm not going to go ahead and think I'm just going to smash them. Despite seeing these names on the pitch and thinking, wow, what are they doing on the pitch? They shouldn't be here. I need to focus up and try and do my best. Into Joao. Joao to Tsigankov. Tsigankov. Zaha. Jovic is making that run. Come on. Jovic on a green timed. That's what you want to see. This guy. The king. King Jovic is back. That's how we're going to call him from this point on. King Jovic with his left foot. Amazing strike. Makes it 2-1 in the 52nd minute. And let's take another look at this beauty of a strike. Greatly played against Sanderberger. Built up this attack. And Jovic's strike is just pure power. Look at the way the ball doesn't even move in the air, man. It's like it's stuck in the air. It's so good. Such a good strike from Jovic to make it 2-1. Very happy about this one. Oh no. Here they come again. It's another cross. And this time Keane bottles it completely. And uh, Tottenham know about bottling, don't they? So that should be just in character, I guess. Harry Kane trying to get his team to push forward right now. Parejo get... Wow. Hold on a second. Did Harry Kane just play a back heel pass like that? Let's calm it down, EA. Let's calm it down. That's not realistic. Tierney, down the left we go. Terrible pass. 73rd minute. And it is time for Shoya to be subbed off. And Trossard is going to come in into the starting lineup. Pereira. Uh, not the starting lineup, but the uh, 11 right here. Sanderberg is obviously going to stay. Uh, Milivojevic. You know what? No. I have to sub him on. Let's see what he does. Hopefully, we can get these scorer points with him, man. One or last, you should be getting it against Harry Kane. Come on, man. Amos on the strike. And Strakosha with the save. Trossard now. Down the wings. He wants to prove himself. He wants to show that he's just as good as Nakajima, if not better. Trossard is still going strong. Trossard. Yes. What a goal. Okay, now. Here's the deal, boys. Is he making it into the starting lineup? I mean, it's a tough one. This battle is continuing. Trossard against Nakajima. We have a totally new dynamic in this career mode right now. And I gotta admit, Trossard, that's a beautiful strike. In terms of finishing, in terms of composure, Trossard beats Nakajima. But in terms of defensive work rate, Nakajima is ridiculous. You guys don't see it, but Nakajima does so well defensively. He picks up the ball and then starts the attack with a pass in our penalty area and then is inside the opponent's penalty area in a couple of seconds as well. So we got to make a decision in between these two. It's, it's not going to be an easy one, I'm telling you. Whoever goes onto the bench will always come on as the hero and score a goal, I think, because obviously with the pace that Trossard or Nakajima have, after like 70 minutes, the opponents, the fullback, will be very tired. And then you can just run past them as we have done right here in this case. But that goal right there shows a lot of quality from Trossard, I gotta admit. And we are beating Tottenham 3-1. We should have done it. We should have done even better than this. Looking at the starting lineup of Tottenham, I don't understand why they are playing these players. Makes absolutely zero sense. But that's the way it goes this year, the last few years with EA. These big teams just all of a sudden stop playing their best players. And Jovic has gotten himself two goals in this match, which is very impressive. And then, of course, Trossard has stepped up and nearly scored two as well himself. Luka Jovic, player of this match with a 9.6 rating. Absolute greatness in King Jovic right there. Hopefully, he can grab that player of the month. He is currently competing against, I would say, Zaha and Tsigankov. So with those results from today's episode, there is still that question. Trossard or Nakajima? Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation in the comments down below. It's going to be a tough decision to make. Nakajima is higher rated. Trossard is so much better in front of goal. It's a tough decision. I mean, he's not so much better. If you look at Nakajima's stats, 
both of these guys have done an amazing job this season and it's gonna be hard to decide in between those two and if you think about Tigankov like if we say no let's remove Tigankov from the starting lineup Tigankov is ridiculous he has so many goal contributions in 23 games Tigankov has man managed to get 15 goal contributions which is way more than Trossard or Nakajima. So there is no debate about Tigankov. He is gonna stay in the starting lineup. So the battle is between Trossard and Nakajima for that starting lineup position. But that is what I love. I love these battles. This is what makes career mode fun, especially content wise. If you have the drama in those things, if you have a storyline to go after, and this is something that I really, really enjoy. Hopefully that will turn out to be an amazing storyline in between those two, both players absolutely amazing like i can't really say anything bad about either of those players nakajima so good with his dribbling so pacey so good in the defense and also great in front of goal and then there's trossard who just has that has that flair about him i don't know what it is but he has that flair about him he moves so well on the ball pure elegance and he puts it into the back of the net when it's needed so we gotta make a decision boys you gotta help me with this one in the comments down below let me know what you think about this whole situation but next game boys we can make sure that we go through into the champions league knockout stages real betis is the opponent and uh hopefully we can get a good result right here if we lose against betis things are not looking too good because after that we are playing against Bayern and that could be a loss against Bayern and that would mean Betis have the chance to beat Basel to go through into the next round hopefully that is not going to be happening two games left in the month of this uh, November then it's December and then it's the January transfer window thank you guys so much for watching this episode I gotta say King Jovic obviously is the player of this episode have a great day boys see you tomorrow